Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and today is a significant day because our team is back together and we are going working live. We're not sending out past um, recordings. Um, that was occasioned by the COVID and a number of other situations, sickness, that uh, prevented us from really working together. But we are now back and from now on we will be doing um, commentaries on the Gospels uh, currently. So today we're going to reflect on the fifth Sunday of Easter and I invite you now to listen to the reading of the Gospel from that Sunday. When he, Judas, had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The, the Gospel of John is rather difficult to divide into sections, but all agree, I think, that there's an introduction, the prologue, then there's the Book of Signs that finishes just prior to the reading that we've had, and then there is the Book of Glory, and that's the Passion, and then there's an epilogue at the end. And as we reflect on this section here, what's happened in the previous sentence is that Judas has gone out, and it was night. So clearly now, a uh, section has ended, and the night is the time when the, the world will seem to be taking over. And the scholars point to the, um, this section as the book of glory. And the glory words occur very much in that first sentence. And the notion of glory in the scriptures is really the presence of God. That in the Old Testament there was the pillar of fire and the cloud that led Israel. And these were all theophanies, evil way that God actually came to the people. So when um, it's said that uh, Jesus glorifies the Father, Jesus was the presence of the Father that the divine was showing through. And when Jesus is to be glorified in the Passion, that in the Passion, really, this is a theophany, that God is actually working here. So as we begin um, this new section with the Gospel that we've just read, um, really, it's, it's time when Jesus is looking forward uh, to his... Um, uh, passion and resurrection. I wanted to single out the, uh, the new commandment. I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Um, John uses words uh, in a way with a meaning that you won't find in the dictionary. A word like light. Um, God is light. I am the light of the world. You are to walk in the light and we are the light of the world. Light there really is, is talking about the nature of God, the life of God that comes to us in Jesus and we are to live it and share it with others. And the same with the love. In the epistles, um, the author of the epistle talks about God is love. And Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. In other words, the Father's love has come to us in Jesus and we are uh, to love as Jesus loved us. So Christianity is not just loving one another, it's loving one another as Jesus has loved us. And we're entering in to the life of God. I wanted to, to share another reading from St John that I think um, captures that um, very well. I ask... Not only on behalf of these, the disciples, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that's us, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them. So they represent the glory uh, and the presence of God so that they may be one as we are one. 
I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. So that whole love idea is us being caught up um, in the mystery of God. I think it was Skillebex, a theologian, who speaks about the disciple as the fifth gospel, that people read the gospel of Jesus in the lives of the disciple. So I, I thought that those thoughts um, give us something to think about, and I think the fact that we are caught up in that uh, really is the application that um, we have a responsibility. It's one thing to be caught up, it's another thing to accept it and live mm. uh, accordingly. Oh, Father John, I'm so glad that um, David is able to share just a little of that um, immense understanding of John's Gospel. I used to be scared of John's Gospel, but listening to the way David breaks it open, I always think of the word abide when I have John's Gospel. And it's this idea, it's a beautiful idea in my heart that um, one is imbibing in the other, living with, in the home of, in the heart, mm. the heart of the home, mm, yes. that we're all one. But I suppose the thing that struck me today was that concept of you will know, people will know that you are my disciples mm. by the way you love one another. And I think um, that's always, oh, how well would people actually say, oh, she's a disciple, or, mm. oh, I don't think she's read that, that very closely. So I suppose for me it's that resonating idea, how well am I demonstrating that in my life is what um, really struck me. And perhaps you can help me on this, because when you were reading that there, I couldn't help thinking of the, the doxology in the Mass through him, with yes, him, in right. him. Yes, yeah. And to me there's something, oh, I love saying that. Mm, and yes. it, there's something about this yeah. abiding yeah. home of well, the Trinity. Is, yes, it's being, I thought that him, extra text I read captured that very well. Yeah, we are just caught up in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Understanding mm. of yes. So, um, yeah. It is good to be back yes. and, yeah. and like one can read in books and things but it's just so, it's like having a living word yeah. and opening it up, it's, it's just coming alive and just a couple of little things that really struck me, Jesus is, um, the words that he spoke to the disciples, my little children, I mean here he was leaving them, they were going to be left but the way in which he spoke to them was, it just, it just seemed to have that sense of sheer tenderness in the way in which, you know, he was interacting with them as he was saying goodbye. And the other thing that struck me, David and Virginia, and you put it so well with, with the word love, and I was thinking about that, that this is really the underpinning of, of the Jesus community, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's, it's not um, rules and regulations and, and all of that important as they are, but there's something else that really sets us apart as a faith community. And where the faith community is disintegrating, and I guess that's true of the church, where it's disintegrating, is because love is not there in the essence of how John is putting it there, coming from the lips of Jesus as, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that formative thing, loving us as I have loved you. Yeah. yeah. They were the two things that just struck me. Mm. It's, it's very rich um, at Easter yes. time when we have the opportunity to read John, isn't it? it However, is. we, we invite you now to, to look, read it, the text again yourself. And, and what is God saying to you in that? It's not a question of repeating what we have said. But as you read it, what is it that comes through to you? We would now invite you to, to listen to the Gospel uh, read again. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, 
Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Just as a personal thing that came through to me after reading the Gospel was that the point I mentioned about accepting the responsibility of sharing in the divine life so that other people will know that you are disciples. And I thought that one could look at, or I can look at my life and just ask, is there anything in it that, that prevents my life from preaching Jesus? And that's something I think we've always got to be aware of. So I, I would like to examine myself um, in the light of that. Uh, in a similar vein, I, I think I've mentioned before, would people know that I'm a disciple of Jesus? We have Mother's Day tomorrow, which can be quite yes. a stressful yeah. day. Yeah. But um, perhaps if I'd like to think that during that day, I'd like to extend that love to the others in the room rather yes. than be yeah. about me. Um, simple, but um, I'd like to think someone might say, oh, she could be a big disciple today. Mm -hmm. it, it's the love dimension that um, struck me too. And to reflect on that in the course of the days of this coming week, uh, not just to, but, but where does love leave me? And I think that leads me to, to service and uh, to inclusion of people that I don't, you know, pick and choose, but embrace whoever becomes a part of my life. That I, I allow that dimension of, of the experience of Jesus and the Jesus in me uh, to be realised in the relationship with the other. Mm -hmm. We invite you now to draw something from the, the scriptures that you can implement in your life. The, the Lexio process begins with what's in the scriptures and ends with what is in your life when the message of the scriptures has become part of your life. So what can you draw from that text to implement in your life now? As we try to implement these things in our life, we're talking about spiritual realities and we need the help of God to do that. Without me you can do nothing, said Jesus, and therefore we might just spend a moment in prayer asking for the grace to be able to implement the things that we have chosen. Thank you for being with us. It's great to be back and to be with you again. And we're going to conclude now, with the way we always do, by reading the prayer from the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen.